Welcome to UQ. Zoe and I are student advisors from UQ, and today we're going to have a chat about getting started your first weeks at university. So in today's session, we're just going to be talking about getting to know UQ, the faculties and accessibilities, UQ digital tools and platforms, support services at UQ, complaints and UQ life. But first, we'd like to acknowledge um, the traditional owners and the lands of the custodianships of the lands with which we meet. We pay our respects to the ancestors and their descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. And we recognise their valuable con contributions to Australian and global society. All right, so first up, we have getting to know UQ. Um, so I guess the first important thing is the academic calendar and important dates. So these are online if you need to relook at them later, but we'll just let you know for these really important ones, 14th of July, is your due date to enrol for domestic students. 21st of July, um, due date to enrol for international students. Um, 4th of August is the final date to adjust your enrollment and your tuition fees are due. So if you wanted to change any classes or um, just get rid of a class entirely, you need to do that before the 4th of August. Then 31st of August is the census date. So last day to drop out of courses or cancel enrollment without financial liability. And 30th of September is your last day to drop courses without academic penalty. Okay, so this slide is having a chat about all the things that you might come up with, with um, terminologies you might not be used to. So what is a course profile? So a course profile gives you the key information about your courses. It outlines the course aims and learning objectives, required resources, assessment criteria and due dates and other important information. At UQ, course profiles are also called ECP. So you'll find that often um, to know exactly what's involved with your assessment or your exams um, within your courses or tutorials. So it's really important that you need to look at what is um, the ECP outline to let you know what's um, involved in your courses. Um, course coordinators are your, what we, you would maybe know as a teacher. So your course coordinators are responsible for planning and teaching a course. Your course coordinator's name and contact details can be found in your course's ECP. So make sure you check that out that, um, on your ECP. And what is an academic advisor? So if you have questions about, you know, um, information on your course or, you know, should you be um, enrolled in a particular course or heading towards graduation, what's the pathway for that process? Each faculty has their academic advisor that can give you some really good guidance in choosing the courses that are for your particular program. Um, here at Student Central, where Zoe and I are with the team, we often interact with the administration staff, uh, faculty office, um, and they're really, um, the administration staff within your school are really responsible for all the enrolment, timetable, dropping courses, and academic progression. So please have a chat to them um, if you're needing information about that. All right, so faculties and accessibility. Um, so UQ facilities, so we do have the library to start off with. So um, not only is it a place where you can go and do your study and rent out resources, um, it's also where you can get IT help and library help from the Ask Us desk. Um, you can print, scan and copy, and they also have laptop loans. So there is a lot you can do there and the library staff are incredibly helpful and we do have access to um, IT rooms as well. We've got shops, student spaces and sporting facilities. So bookshops, we've got the pharmacy, the post office, hairdresser, um, you know, everything that you need is somewhere on campus, which is really, really helpful because um, it can be a bit overwhelming trying to get into new suburbs or into the city if you're new. So for the time being, you can find everything here on campus. Um, and there is lots of health and safety um, that we have on campus. So we do have security that's 24 seven. And if you do ever feel unsafe, you can give them a call 24 seven and they can come give you a hand. Um, 
on that, we've also got the Safe Zone app. So that's an app you can download when you're on campus um, and you can do check-ins on there. If you're feeling a bit unsafe even walking to one other side of the campus, you can check in and check out once you've gotten somewhere safe. Um, obviously, you've got your student ID cards as well. And then we've got our healthcare clinic and dental clinic here. So hopefully with all of these together, you find that you've got everything you need. Um, some other facilities that you might not be aware of, there's the UQ Union, which is a really beautiful resource here at St. Lucia and the Gatton campus where you can access um, free um, support, whether it's legal advice with visa support, they have information on um, disability spaces and women's rooms. So it's really important if you need to access that information that they can support you at the union. Um, there's uh, prayer rooms and chaplaincy, which is uh, two different spaces. One's at St. Lucia campus and the other one's at the Gatton campus. Um, so that's really good to know. And also we have the study spaces. So the libraries are open 24 seven. You just need um, after hours, you just need your student ID card to access them. Um, you can also book rooms, which is really important if you've got a Zoom appointment or you've got to uh, record or present for your assessment. So you can um, use that as well. And we have lots of computer labs throughout the schools and faculties. So lots of space to come and study. Um, yeah. Um, so in terms of accessibility, we offer a wide range of services for students with disability, illnesses, injury, mental health, um, and or caring responsibilities. So that is one of the main roles that Beck and I do as student advisors. Um, if you do identify as having any of those kind of issues, you can come to us and have a chat about how we can make your university time um, a little bit easier and more equitable for you. So we can help you set up things such as student access plans, um, exam adjustments, and if you would like to find out more about that and maybe see if you think you might be eligible, um, we recommend you head over to the DDI link that's just here on this slide and have a read through it on our website. Okay, getting um, to campus. So there's a, a variety of different ways you can get to the campuses. In particular, um, at the St. Lucia campus, you can um, catch the ferry, which is, there's lots of different options there. If you're living in the city, if you have student accommodation that's in the city or nearby, you might be able to catch the bus. Um, you can definitely drive and there's lots of uh, cheap parking um, spots that you can park around the campuses. Um, cycling is a very good option. There's lots of safe um, cycling um, tracks that you can take around Brisbane. So that's a good option. There's a few train stations that you can access and get uh, from train to bus to university. So there's a different combinations you can use. But there's loads of walking opportunities that you can go along the Brisbane River, but also um, through different suburbs. And we highly recommend um, to have a look at that um, for the different options that you'll need a go card, which is a, basically a card that you can get from the um, news agency, which gives you um, cheaper um, options to, to use public transport here in Brisbane. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So yeah, like Beck said, there's already um, some information about your go-card there, 50% off travel costs. Um, yeah, and you will get a cheaper go-card as a student, which is really good as well. Um, and then you've got Odin Pass um, app, which is another public transport app. Um, so we recommend if you're using public transport a lot, like every single day, um, the Odin Pass might be an even better option than the go-card, but it's worth having a look at both and then weighing up which one you think is better for you. And on the St. Lucius campus, we have a, um, a place where you can get go-cards. So if you're on campus here, you can actually pick up a go-card and then put money on it so you can pay for public transport while you're here. Okay, so the basics. So when you come to university here at UQ, you'll be off, um, given a student number and a username. So this is really important for you to write down um, because this gives you access to lots of things, but it also helps identify who you are. You'll pick up your student ID card here from Student Services and Student Central. So um, once you have access to that, you'll be able to log into the Wi-Fi and use the computers at the library um, or to log on to your laptop and use um, the, the internet here. So it's very simple. Your student number has seven digits and then your username is a small s and then six digits of your student number. 
And your student email is uh, really important. Obviously, that's how we would be able to contact you or other staff members such as your course coordinator will be able to contact you. And that's the number one way that we can get in contact with you um, instead of contacting your mobile or um, that's using your email is probably the best way. Um, and things to remember to check this email daily. So there's communications with the university. Um, there might be communications with your course coordinator or updates about changes within the university. It's really important that you actually check your um, uh, student email so that you can keep on top of what's happening within the university. Okay, so um, going to starting at UQ, you'll find out how to activate your student email. And you can set it up on your mobile as easy access. So if you don't need your laptop, but you can still access this on your phone, that's also a really easy way to check your emails. All right, so this is the my.uq website. Um, so this one's basically a bit of a central hub for everything you're going to need. So it provides access to your dashboard. So you can have access to your email, timetable, and all of your other study resources, which you can see down the little left-hand column in purple. Um, so this is also the website you go to if you want to submit a request, such as maybe you need an extension if you are unwell, um, or you want to take an interruption to your studies. It's all done through this website as well. Here you can also check your student records. So all of the passings you've studied, what grades you've gotten in those subjects. You can look at UQ policies and rules, and you can also access my Cynet and Blackboard, which as you'd probably already know, are the, the other main um, websites you'll need here at UQ. Okay, my Cynet, it's an internal um, intranet space where you can access a lot of your information. Um, and what information is stored on there is your uh, what courses you're enrolled in, um, your personal details, which is a great place if you, in case you move home address or you, you change your mobile address, you need to update there. It's the only way that Student Services or UQ is able to get in contact with you. Um, you can access uh, information about paying your fees, deferring your exams, viewing your final grades, and requesting to change the program. So it's a very, um, a great space to check that all the internal things that are happening within your courses and what you're enrolled in. So it's really important that you check that what you're enrolled in is the things that you're actually doing within your, your program. But this is where you find this information. All right, and Blackboard. So Blackboard is where you view all of your lecture notes and recordings. So if you do want to rewatch a lecture or if you missed the lecture that day, you're able to jump on Blackboard and rewatch it anytime you need. So you can also look at your course profile. So the ECPs, they're all available on here. Sometimes your course coordinators will write messages on Blackboard um, and they might be messages they don't send in the email. So it's really important you check um, Blackboard regularly as well in case your course coordinators have been trying to um, reach you for anything. So here you can also collaborate with other students. You submit your assessment through Turnitin through this site as well, and you view your assessment results. So Blackwood, Blackwood will be one you visit very, very religiously. It's a very important site. Um, and I know it, it can sound confusing which website you have to go for what, but eventually, um, all in good time, I'm sure you'll start to find it a bit easier. Okay, support services at UQ. Um, so like Zoe and I mentioned before, we're student advisors and we work within the student's central building. So this beautiful building here you can see on the screen with the big gold rings, you really can't miss it. It's a beautiful space here which offer a lot of support for students through the academic st uh, study space through to counselling and then what Zoe, Zoe and I do within the team, which is the student advisor support. So I'll quickly go through each one um, and then it gives you an idea of the things that you can access here at Student Central. So the first one on the left says the Student Central Administration. So this is really important for you to access if you need information around how to enrol and what the fees are. You need to change programs, admissions. Um, the Allianz Help Desk is a really important one. So for any international students that need to speak um, in a consultation appointment around your Allianz um, insurance, that's a really important one to, to access. And of course, then you've got information of how to, where to go for, for graduation once you reach that point um, towards the end of your program. 
So the middle service is the student advice team. So there's about 12 of us. We're a big team, but we're there to support students in a holistic approach. So we can support students from uh, the first years all the way through to PhD students. We support students in um, obtaining, helping obtain medical um, documentation to create information um, for your student access plans. And that information goes through to your course coordinators to help them know what sort of support you need within your tutorials and classes. You might need some support around um, for international students. So helping navigate Brisbane or settling into Brisbane. That's um, We often talk to students about those sort of um, conversations. And also you might be impacted by financial hardship. Your accommodation might be really um, need some support around talking to your landlords um, and just a general welfare check-ins as well for student safety. So there's a it's a real um, holistic approach, but we definitely have a big team that can support all students. And then the last one on the right is the learning advisors. So that's your study skills support. So they're a beautiful team um, where they'll sit down and uh, do one-on-one -on -one appointments with you around your academic writing structures, time management, effective note-taking, um, preparing for exams. So you'll meet a learning advisor here at Student Central for a one-on-one -on -one appointment, but they've also got lots of uh, workshops that you can have a look at, and you can definitely look at that on the website. Um, it's ongoing workshops around study skills and, um, and all of their uh, time management, procrastination, things that they do constant workshops with. So that's a really good one. All right, so we've also got um, UQ Counselling, Sexual Misconduct Support Unit and UQ Respect. Um, so with our counsellors, every student is eligible for free 10 sessions a year. And those are all completely confidential appointments where you can talk to your counsellor about whatever it is that you have concerns about. Um, although if you do need to speak to someone more urgently um, and you're not sure who to talk to or where to go, we do actually have a... Um, after hours NUQ crisis line, which you can see there written as well. So we do really encourage students that if it's out of hours and you're not able to book in with a counsellor that day to please call the crisis line. Um, so UQ Wellbeing, that's one of our really great teams here. Um, they can they offer health promotion projects for culturally and linguistically diverse communities. They do a lot of wellbeing workshops, mental health champions, um, which is students working alongside other students um, in supporting mental health. Um, and then they also um, guide students with sexual and reproductive health. Um, and lastly, we've got UQ Healthcare and Dental. Um, so we actually have healthcare and dental on all of our campuses. So whether you're going to Gatton or St. Lucia, there will be a medical center if you're not feeling well that you're able to book into and a dental center. So please keep that in mind um, because it's probably cheaper than going somewhere in the community. Okay, UQ Union, I touched on that a little bit before, but they, they also support students with a variety of things. The main things that we really love sending students for that ongoing support with is uh, around the legal matters, job preparation, visa advice, so um, migration. Uh, they've got a really beautiful migration support team there um, and they have a lot of clubs and societies. So if you are new to UQ, you're new to Brisbane, you um, you know want to join a, a club or a, a really fun thing to do you can there's about 230 different clubs you can join you can have a look on the union website um, but there's a really beautiful space there um, for so that social interaction if you're needing to kind of make those connections um, yeah all right so um just going back to some of those groups we these are some of examples so we've got the University of Queensland Ally Network. So that's for students who identify as LGBTIQ+. Um, and I think that's really special that we have something like that at our university. Um, so, you know, at UQ, we strive to ensure our campus is a safe and respectful environment for all our students. So respect is about treating all others with dignity and care. So it, it, it is one of our main mottos we say here. Okay, so at times you might, oh, I'll let the video play and, and explain it for you. I'll just press play on this one. At UQ, we love that everyone is so different. 
People are bound to disagree at times. But if you find yourself disagreeing with the decision or action made by the university, you'll need to know what to do. So here's our three tips for getting to know the UQ Student Grievance Resolution Policy. Number one, Google UQ Student Grievance. The policy is all about being fair. But if you have a complaint or want to appeal a decision made by the uni, you'll need procedures, guidelines and the policy. Next, try to resolve the situation informally. How? Write them a letter, ask a staff member to talk to the person, or request a mediation meeting. Most importantly, explain your concern and how you'd like it resolved. And lastly, seek help and contact your student union to speak with an education and equity advocate as soon as possible. Google UQ Shop for more info. So, understand the policy, try an informal resolution, and act on time. Remember, support is available. So a lot of students may um, access the union for that sort of support as well. So if you've got a um, complaint form that you want sort of finalised, we always send students to the union because they've got a really um, a beautiful free legal support that can um, support you in that process. All right, so UQ Life. So there are a number of ways you can get involved in the UQ community to help develop professionally, create an impact, connect with other students and staff and celebrate your achievements. So UQ Life is really great because they constantly put on events um, for, for students and staff to go along. And UQ Life is one of those things if you join, it's, it's really great for your resume and further employment opportunities. So you'll see um, in semester one, in March, we had employability one, employability week, sorry. Um, and that's where you can meet um, different kind of employability agents that you might run into in the future. Um, so you'll see there on the right side, careers and employability. Um, there's the employability award, global experiences, student staff partnerships, online employability courses and career development courses. Um, so yeah, I think it's a really cool thing you can get involved in. Okay, so get set. So there's another program that students, all new students that we really um, recommend join. So there's a little QR code there if you want to take a photo of that and look into it, some peer, uh, peer mentoring. The Get Set program is a really great opportunity for new students, especially in their first year, to connect with other students in the same faculty, learning tips from students who have done it before. So you're linking in with other students that are maybe towards the end of their degree or um, have done a fair few years of study at the uni. So they'll kind of mentor you and support you to help navigate that space and also sort of settle you into your new studies here at UQ. So if you've got an opportunity and you want to sort of get involved in that program, um, it's a free program and you can just do, take a photo of the QR code and get connected through that way. So it would be really great if you could take the QR code again. This is a different one, but this just gives us, our team and the university, an understanding about your experience in this um, and knowledge and education around the information we shared today and also helps us, uh, we're all learning, so helps us to understand how we can do it better for next time, but also what's important for you. So it's just a short survey. So if you could just complete that one for us, that gives us a, a guidance of, um, yeah, how we can improve this for next time or, or keep it as is. Um, Thank you so much for your, uh, listening to us. You can contact us at Student Support, Student Services, and we'd be happy to guide you um, if you're needing that assistance. Thank you so much, everyone, and we hope you enjoy your studies.